Oh yeah, right. So life skills. Okay, let's talk life skills, guys. First of all, life skills, you'll learn them for the first time when you get to Lake Bar at level 20. Lake Bar is really early on. It's uh, right, uh, right around here. When you get to this area right here, you'll get some quests that teaches you how to do some life skills and you'll unlock all the basic life skills and you'll get a guide quest for each and every one of them. Each life skill has its own level and it has its own skills that to, to learn and it also has a bunch of passives that you can learn along the way when you press b you switch from combat mode to life skill mode and you can see your energy this energy is shared across all the characters on your account and so if you do life skills on one character it does it on the other one as well that being said this menu is also shared by all characters on your account which means all life skill levels and all tools that you currently have equipped are also equipped on all of your characters even if you newly create one so if you have purple and relic tools equipped on this character, I also have them equipped on every other character too. Some of these skills are passives and some of them are active and some of them make uh, the profession a little bit more engaging to do. And we have six professions here that we can work with. There's no crafting in Lost Ark. There's only gathering. Crafting is done through an NPC in the estate. And crafting equipment is done through a processing vendor with the materials that you get. Uh, as you level up the profession, you'll get more of these, but you're you're going to be limited by your life skill energy, and you only regenerate about 4,000 life skill energy a day. Uh, 4,400 if you have the crystal and aura. The tools, you'll get a set of them when you start out in the game, uh, and when you when you get to the when you get your professions, you'll get a set of tools. When you complete the guide quest, they'll give you a blue tool for each one of them, and also your founders pack also comes with a set of blue tools as well. The blue tools, or the tools in general, they roll random stats on them. There's a pool of stats that you can get from each of these tools, and they're rolled on acquisition. You cannot sell the tools, they're bound to you immediately. Tools also have a durability, and as you use them, it lowers the max durability. They can be restored using an, a special item that you can craft uh, in your estate. They also sell it in the cash shop. I don't know if they'll sell it in any used cash shop, but most people, if they're going to repair it, they'll probably do it through the estate. These tools, the stats that they get, really vary quite a bit. Uh, and some of them are good and some of them are not so good. For example, when you're doing mining, lumbering, and gathering, you tend to be surrounded by monsters that if they breathe in your direction, it'll cancel you gathering. However, there's a stat that's called super armor that you can get when you get a tool. And uh, when, when you have super armor on, enemies cannot interrupt you while you're doing crafts. Good tools, though, are not something that you will have early on. And so early on, my recommendation is to actually go to any life skill vendor. And they'll sell green rarity tools, which is the lowest rarity tools. And you can see the pool of stats that you can roll from them. I would recommend that depending on the profession you're doing, you would just keep buying these green tools over and over until you roll super armor on them. It's just convenient. It'll make your life so much easier not being interrupted 24-7. Uh, good professions to get super armor on are basically these five. Fishing does not need it because all fishing spots are in safe areas. Certain professions also have mini games associated with them, and the mini game professions included are fishing and archaeology. Uh, for fishing, you get it at level 30, and at archaeology, you get it at level 20. And with these two professions, as you build up stacks of uh, some thingy, you gain a buff, and at five stacks, the next mini the next thing that you harvest is guaranteed to have a mini game, which gives you really high yield. Okay, so what does each profession do? For gathering, these this is the main thing used for battle items. Uh, crafting battle items like potions, bombs, etc. is primarily related to herbalism is a good one if you want to craft your own battle items lumbering and mining is primarily used for your estate raising your estate researching stuff in your estate repairing your boats in your estate that's what these are used for this will be a, probably a, a decently popular profession early on when people are scrambling to level up their state but it usually falls off in value pretty quickly these three are roughly used for the same thing they're used in certain recipes along with herbalism, and they're used in certain foods as well, but their main purpose as to why they exist is they are used to craft... Where's the item codex? 
So starting from plus seven in tier two, you'll have to use a special catalyst in addition to the leaf stones and weapon and armor stones. These catalysts are created from fishing, hunting, and archaeology. It's a mandatory resource. You have no choice but to use them. You either craft them yourself or buy them from someone who has made them. And these are, these are used from this point onwards. In tier three as well, this is also the case. In tier three, starting from, I guess plus four, huh? From plus four, you also use these mats. Something that's really important to know about these mats is all of them use the same materials. Regardless if it's tier two or tier three, it uses the same materials. So it'll use a material that is specific to tier two or tier three, but the other materials are the same. And this is the main bottleneck here. This is the main thing that stops people from crafting it. And this basic material can be got, it can be obtained from any node in tier one, tier two, or tier three. So technically, if you have stone, it is possible to hold off until tier three and use the stone then. But people will need these upgrading catalysts in tier two as well. Each of these catalysts, whether it's this one or the one from tier two, the blue one, has three recipes. One that does fishing, one does that does hunting, and one that does archaeology. So you can pick your profession of choice. Yes, even tier two requires it, starting from plus seven. So regarding the profession, so why are there three of them? The reason is because each of these require a different amount of effort that caters to a different kind of player. Archaeology has the most yield and the most efficient recipes. It is literally the best when it comes to crafting this stuff for energy value for what you get. But life skill nodes for hunting and archaeology are shared uh, by all players. And so it's very competitive. If someone harvests a, a digging spot, you cannot harvest it. And so there's competition related to it. Fishing, on the other hand, has pretty inefficient recipes relative to archaeology, but there's no competition involved. You can go to any body of water that has a fishing spot and uh, you can fish to your heart's content. You, ne you never have to worry about someone else taking your fish or anything like that. And so it's a very comfortable way to do your life skills. It also takes much longer to use your life skill energy uh, compared to archaeology or hunting. But it can take a long time to do archaeology too, depending on how competitive the maps are as well. You could level up all of these professions, but again, you're limited by your life skill energy. Would you say it would be smart to have an alt that just is gathering? I would say that when it comes to gathering, I would recommend a high level mobile alt. Someone that has decent gear so that the mobs beating you up don't have you drinking potions while you're doing your professions. And also a class that has a very high mobility so you can travel from node to node quickly. It could be your main. Yeah. I mean, if your main is a high mobility character, I'm saying in the situation where you're like playing like a gun lancer or something, uh, you probably won't want to do professions on like a gun lancer. Yes, it's shared across characters. So there's one more thing in regards to these professions, and that is the house professions. House professions are unlocked when your estate makes it to level 10. And house professions are for people that hate professions, but don't want to waste their energy. When you unlock the house professions, it will unlock an area inside your private house with resource nodes. And you could lock off your house to prevent players from harvesting them so that, that only you could harvest them. Uh, by default, it's not locked. So these profession nodes they, they drop completely different professions than the ones found in the overworld and they are bound and everything that you craft using them is also bound. So if you, if you create stuff using this stuff, um, you can't sell it. You can only use it yourself. And the recipes are fairly inefficient as well. The reason why it's for the lazy person is because it uses up a lot of life skill energy per, compared to the outside world. So you can burn through your life skill energy in a fraction of the time. 
Uh, you might be wondering why this would be good, considering you can get more with your life skill energy, is because people value their time in Lost Ark. Okay? Even if you have way better yield and way better stuff from doing archaeology for like an hour and a half, was it worth your hour and a half that you could have spent doing other stuff? Everything created using house life skill items is bound. And you get less you get less EXP from your for your professions inside the house, and you cannot drop world tree leaves in here. You can level them, it'll just be slower. Right, exactly. It's a way to waste your energy, but not let it completely waste. What is that? This is the pet ranch. This is where you train your pets to work hard, and while they're training, they just happen to also be generating electricity to work your cookie factory. What do the cookies give? I'm glad you asked. Cookies can be turned in at the little drug dealer right here. And with your cookies, you can get things used to upgrade your pets, as well as a bunch of cosmetics. If you happen to be a furry, you can get animal ears. And there's also a really nice hoodie here that has wings. There's a bunch of other nice little cosmetics in here as well. Yes, they're all dyeable as well. So, I have a spot that I really like for archaeology. Um, it happens to be in the tier 2 area, Yorn. Okay, so I'll, get, I'll show you guys an example of professions, uh, or arch archaeology. Uh, so for this, I have a... I'll, I'll put on a speedier build. And, uh... It ain't perfect, but I'll put on my agility pet as well. And so, this little switch will bring me up to... 132% move speed. And I'll switch to my movement speed card setup as well. So, this will let me cap out at 140% move speed. So now my character is naturally zoomy. And I also have a little skill build set up for him so that he can travel a little bit faster as well. So with this set, I can go a little bit faster. While I'm traveling from node to node. Okay, so archaeology. What did I do here? With archaeology, I've decided that I have two tools to work with here. I have a purple tool and I have a relic tool. The purple tool is my basic tool with super armor that I use to collect most nodes. The relic tool I'm only equipping when I have five stacks of my buff. When I have five stacks of the archaeology buff, the next thing that I harvest is guaranteed to be a mini game. And I have a bunch of stats on this shovel that increase the amount of stuff that I get from the mini games. The great thing about the mini games for both fishing and archaeology is that you have complete invulnerability during them. So even though my relic shovel doesn't have, um, it doesn't have super armor on it, I don't have to worry about being interrupted because of it. What I'm looking for while I'm doing this are purple nodes. You see, this has a green name. That's a green node, so it's a less, it's less, uh, it's going to give me less yield. And all the spawn spots for nodes are static. They're not RNG. So you can kind of memorize where they are and then just keep revisiting them. What I'm looking for here is I'm looking for a purple node. So that'll be the one that I do the mini game on because purple nodes give more. And with that, if I just come back to the purple node afterwards, I'll be able to do the mini game on it and get an extra yield. Uh, I'm noticing that a lot of these spots don't have stuff on them, so... Is someone doing professions here? In that case, I'll just change channels. Lower population servers are easier to do po uh, professions on. Uh, uh, hmm. Okay, here we go. So I'm doing my professions in a tier 2 map, so the blue material that I get is the tier 2 material. Unfortunately, it's not worth that much. I need the tier 3 material to craft tier 3 related items. However, the reason that I'm doing it here is because the tier 3 maps are horribly crowded and it's impossible to do your professions on there on, on them, it feels like. 
Fishing isn't contested, but fishing, fishing has less yield. I don't even know if it's a tier 2 or tier 3 map. Well, it's in a tier 2 zone, so it's a, it's a tier 2 materials. Tier 3 maps and tier 3 contents will have uh, what I'm looking for. This map is also fairly scarce. Why don't they fix T3 professions then? Well, then it would reduce scarcity, and that would make it harder for people to make money from it. There would be higher supply, so there would be less demand. People gotta make money, you know? What's the respawn rate in those? I don't know the exact respawn rate. By the way, a lot of the things that I'm passing by, sometimes I can't tell if they're bots or if they're real players, but usually you can tell if they are uh, one or the other. So I have five stacks right now, and that's a green node. But I'm looking for a purple node right now. And I'll skip around for a little bit, and I'll try. I only have two minutes to find one before my stacks fall off, so I'll just look for a few, for like a minute or two, and see if I can find a purple node. Yeah, there's a, there's a pretty decent chance that those are just bots. Also a green node. Pretty unlucky so far. Worst case scenario, I'll just use the stacks on a green node. Ah, oh, there we go. Perfect. Almost like this was scripted. So now, before I interact with this, I'm going to use my Relic Shovel, switch to it, and then I'll interact with this. And that'll get me 171 rocks. As you saw before, the rocks were only giving me like 20 before. So you can see how using the mini game, a good shovel and the relic spot or the purple spot can give you a lot of extra rocks. The thing about that mini game is it'll give you like nothing if you fail even one of those. You have to succeed all three. The good news is if you fail even one, you can hit the escape key and then exit the mini game. And then the next thing that you interact with will also have the mini game. But you had to stay within the two minutes. Like you had to use up your, your stacks within two minutes. Uh, it also consumes a node if you escape from it. How much energy did that little run deplete? A little over 1,000. Do T3 spots give more rocks? They do. They do give a little bit of rocks, uh, a little bit of extra rocks. Okay, so that mini game is very, very difficult if you don't have a tool that assists with it. So going back to my relic shovel, this is a really good shovel because on top of all the additional stuff that it gives, it also has a stat on it that says reduces the difficulty of the archaeology minigame by three levels. Um, <laughs> without this tool, that minigame feels almost impossible to actually pass. Is this really time consuming? I hope the stuff you get is worth it. Sure, we can check that out. I'll show you. The shovel can break. The durability gets worn down over time. How do you get the relic shovel? So when you do archaeology, there's a small chance that you can dig up a box that has a that has a tool in it and the tool is used to craft uh the relic item so not only is this archaeology have the best recipes it also has a chance to dig up the potential of tools and uh these toolboxes yeah it's much quicker when i'm not explaining while also doing it and also i was really unlucky with the purple uh spots as well so yeah, toolboxes only draw from archaeology. So archaeology is an all-encompassing profession, but it also has the most it has the most competition of all the professions by far. The relic box can only drop from tier three areas, and in general, the drop rate is very low from an already low chance of a box appearing. So these are expensive. If you want a relic toolbox, for example, it costs sixteen thousand gold. Does it make it? Does it justify? Does the cost justify making it? Yes, it does. As long as you don't get fucked over and craft a crappy shovel. Uh, but I definitely get my value out of it. And the way I can, the, the way I know this is that um, this shovel is nowhere near close to breaking, even though I've been using it for a long time. I also got really lucky, and this, this shovel has a, a reduced chance of durability loss. Uh, but this is like a per this is an almost a perfect shovel in general. But it has 97 durability. As you use the tool, the durability will go down, the max durability. And as I mentioned before, you can repair the tool as well. Um, I would say that if you are only using the 4,000 energy you, you regenerate each day, life skills can take around like 30 minutes. 
And uh, uh, from the stuff that I'm crafting, you can see that I can craft this, which is a necessary component for me to... Yes, you can repair the shovel. Um, it's a necessary component in order for me to upgrade my, my items. The efficiency of this recipe is pretty damn good. The energy is per account. So you don't have to do it on each character. That would be horrible. Uh, to give you an idea of how good the recipe is, when I crafted about 10,000 gold worth of these mats, uh, the value of what I was crafting was worth about 20,000 gold. So I saved myself 10,000 gold um, from just doing my professions. So it's something. It's time consuming, but it's it, everything that you have has a technical gold value. Even if you didn't want to craft these to use themselves or to sell, you could even sell the raw components. And you can see that 100 rocks is worth 110 gold. You start doing life skills at around level 20 once you reach the life bar map. When you're crafting, there's a small chance that your cri your, your craft crits and you double you craft double the amount of materials. Gathering is account wide. All right. Now it's time for the quiz. Anyone who gets the question wrong, uh, you're banned from the chat. 